Hello everyone, a long time no see and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you a very personal project of mine, which is the 23andMe DNA Shirinori project. So basically a little while ago I took a 23andMe DNA test, um, which is basically when they take your DNA and try to decide where your DNA came from. All around the world so it's basically trying to pinpoint where genetically your DNA is from. It's a very good way to sort of pinpoint where your ancestors are from in the world so that's why I took it for because I wanted to actually know where they came from since um, both of my parents don't really know too much about their ancestors. So I decided to do a look inspired by where 23andMe said my DNA was from in the world, which was really difficult because my DNA is from everywhere in Europe and Asia, not just East Asia, but West Asia as well, which was a bit shocking to me. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started with my 23andMe Shirinori look. First off, as always, I'm going to apply a white foundation to my entire face and blend that all in. If you're new to this channel, what I do on this channel on a frequent basis, very frequently, is shirinori, which is Japanese for painted in white. Now I started doing this a couple of years ago because I felt like the style reminded me so much of a band I loved as a kid called Melisse Mazur. So I started doing this, but I also like to approach it in a way that reflects my own heritage. My grandmother was actually born in Japan, but ethnically we're Korean, so yeah. Now for the eyes. I wanted to go for something that reminded me of Korean embroidery since growing up I found Korean embroidery to be so pretty and I loved looking at it. First, what I'm going to do here is lay down a wash of gray and black all over my socket bone area. Now the reason why I say my socket bone area is because I have sort of hooded eyelids and if I were to just apply it on my crease, if I opened my eyes, you wouldn't really see it. Now obviously I don't want that to happen because I want you to see my eyeshadow. So. I'm applying it right along my socket bone area. Now I'm going to go in and use a water activated face paint. And this one obviously is in the color white. It's from Diamond FX and it's pretty good. I'm going to use a very small face painting brush from Creolon. It's very essential for this. And I'm going to draw cloud-like shapes all over this um, eyeshadow. Now this may seem very reminiscent of the cloud eye trends going on around Instagram and YouTube. I think Nikki Tutorials did a video on this. But it's kind of like that, but I'm doing it in a different way to make it resemble something else, in this case, embroidery. My advice with any sort of look like this is to take your time, especially if you're using water activated face paint because you really can't just wipe this away and it'll all be good, you know, like with eyeshadow. You mess up and you're kind of in trouble because you have to start all over again. So do take your time and use a very small fine brush so that you can go in very small strokes.
Now I'm going to take a liquid eyeliner and this is from a brand I no longer support so I'm not going to mention or allude to what this brand is but I'm going to first align my upper eyelids and then take the eyeliner and sort of draw it so it merges with the sort of cloud-like shapes up above so it sort of looks all seamless and like it's really integrated with each other. Then I'm taking some gray and black eyeshadows and once again using a very small brush I'm very carefully shading in the cloud-like shapes to give it the embroidery look I'm going after. So I'm going along the sides of some of these and shading that in. And for others I'm going in the middle and adding the gray and black shadows there. This will allow it to sort of more integrate with the black um, eyeshadow I applied down below earlier. Now this design is very top heavy, so I'm going to balance it out with another shape down below my bottom eyelids. So I'm taking my brush and very simply drawing a teardrop shape going around my bottom eyelid. Then I'm going to take a black shadow and fill in my eyebrows. I actually do have ones for once. I didn't shave them off this time, but I usually do. So I'm just filling those in and then going in with a brow gel, which is from It Cosmetics, I think. And I'm just going to brush that through my hairs, my eyebrow hairs, that is. I'm just doing that to make them more prominent. Then I'm taking a mascara. Use any mascara you want if you're going to try to do this. If not, ignore me, but... <laughs> Just taking a mascara and applying a set of false mink lashes on top. Now these are from Lash Factory and they're quite soft and very high quality and I really do like it. Now let's move on to the rest of the face. First I'm going to reach for a grayish taupe shadow and apply that all around my nose, the bottom half of it, that is. And the reason why I'm doing this is not because I want to emulate a certain style or have any sort of meaning behind it, but whenever you apply, you know, sheer annoying makeup or any sort of white makeup, it makes your actual um, facial features sort of disappear and I don't want that. So I'm using this shadow to bring my features back forward in this case my nose. Now I'm going to move on to my neck and chest and taking that active water activated that is not activated but water activated face paint once again and coating my neck and chest with it. Um, it's a little bit hard to do because there's a lot of streaking if you're not careful with the way you apply it but just go in a crisscross fashion and you should be good. Then afterwards I'm going to go in with a black gel liner I think at first because I was an idiot. Don't use that. <laughs> but I'm using that to copy the designs on my beads onto my neck and chest. Now I haven't shown these yet but I've created a ton of beads for this look to put into my hair. And they all contain designs that allude to my um, Asian and European DNA. So as you can see here, I'm drawing in flowers and plants. Some of these flowers are based on traditional Korean designs, whereas others 
are meant to represent a national flowers like the national flower of Germany, which is the cornflower. And the plants are supposed to represent laurel wreaths, which are associated with ancient Greece and Rome. Them drawing in little runes here and there, which are of course a homage to my Swedish heritage. For the final step, I'm taking some white face paint and blanking out my lips with it. Then adding two dots right here. This represents the two dots from the yin yang symbol, which are used in South Korea's and Mongolia's flags. In case you didn't know, they're kind of similar. I didn't know that before, but very interesting. Then shading around my lips for more dimension. Also like the worst storm was happening when I was doing this. I was like freaking out because the lights were like flickering on and off. Speaking of, it's raining and thundering right now. Hope you enjoyed the little ambiance, but Let's discuss the beads I made for this look. This actually took me three weeks to make and it was very labor intensive. I strung these onto plastic string and attached them to a bobby pin. So here's what they all mean. For the final step, I used this lace front black wig from Pro Beauty Amazon. It's really full of volume and fits my head in a very comfortable way. It's nice and roomy. I did pin this back because I want the beadwork I did for this look to be very visible.
So this is the end of my 23 and me shirinori look. Um, it was quite difficult to do this because I had to sort of figure out which parts of my DNA I wanted to incorporate into certain parts of this look, which took me, what, three weeks, I think. It was quite a long time, but I hope you enjoyed this personal project of mine. It was quite a challenge, but I really loved doing it. Anyways, I will see you all later, and I hope you all are doing well. Bye.